Hello friends, I would like to share with you what I consider as the ultimate money formula. It is the ultimate money formula for many reasons, not just for personal finance for low income people, but definitely applies to medium to high income professionals also, like doctors, engineers, athletes and entertainers and so on. And this goes all the way up to socio-economic planning for big businesses and I hope especially for politicians who want to improve the country's economy. This formula is very unique. I did not learn this in any textbooks or by going to schools or college nor by finishing any online courses of which I have accomplished a lot. This knowledge that I am about to share with you, this ultimate money formula, is something I have developed entirely on my own. After so many years of actual hands-on in business practice and trading in the financial markets. Now, before I get into the actual ultimate money formula itself, I would like to give you a brief introduction on who I am just so you know. But if in case you want to go forward straight to the ultimate money formula, the link and timestamp is in the description below. However, I do hope you listen and watch the full video so you could understand who I am and what gives me some knowledge and authority to speak about personal finance, business, and social economics. First of all, I am Sunil Takur. I was born in Baguio City, Philippines in November of 1973. I was virtually born in and grew up in a department store. Every weekend and free time I have from school, I would spend working as a cashier mostly, sometimes as a salesperson, or doing just about anything else helping out in the department store. Some people might remember this as Valeram's department store in Baguio City, Philippines. Anyway, I grew up with the mixed cultures of Filipino Indian and American as well. Since I was born in Baguio City, grew up there to an Indian family, and also at the time when the U.S. influence in the Philippines was still very strong, particularly for us, since we were very near to Camp John A. I first studied in St. Louis University in Baguio City, where I learned a lot of moral values, then moved to Manila and studied high school in La Salle Green Hills. Then finally, I finished my Bachelor of Science, specializing in business management from San Beda University, in 1995. All this time, I have been very much exposed with business since all family members, even remote family members, are all into business one way or another. From as small as agriculture to as big as import and export manufacturing companies. I have relatives who have been into business and I'm in constant contact with them. I myself, I'm exposed to a lot of business activities as well. After graduating in San Beda, I realized that one of my main interests was in trading in the financial markets, especially in stock market. I really liked it very much as it dealt with many companies in various industries. But one thing I noticed everything we learned in school did not apply in the stock market. It hardly applied at all, since what we learned in school showed us that generally, on a quarterly basis, the stocks should have a steady price, but that's not the case, not just for stocks, but almost all financial assets or commodities as well. Prices always fluctuate up and down, 
constantly, even inside the day. Interested in what causes this up and down movement, I studied further. In 1997, as the Asian financial crisis hit, it got me only even more interested in the financial markets. I studied price action and price movement using basic Microsoft Excel charts, not even knowing that there is actually a science and an art known as technical analysis that covers this field. However, I have learned so much since the 97 Asian crisis up until today. Bottom line for my self-introduction is that I was about the fifth grade and I was already working as a cashier or as a salesman. Later on, I was assisting my brother and my dad after the store. We started an import business all the way up until I graduated. I've been exposed to the restaurant business as well, and also import, manufacturing, distribution, wholesaling, export, and as well as retail of a large variety of goods and services, including musical parts and accessories, sporting goods, opticals, general merchandise, dry goods. In fact, recently, we have also ventured into the business of agriculture, or rather advanced agriculture, with hydroponics and aquaponics supplies. At present, I am actively trading financial markets, but we also have modern agriculture supplies and the new business venture that I started, VAARTS Parts. This is tools and technology, a wide variety of software and services meant for teachers and entrepreneurs, and even established businesses. So I do hope you follow this video until the end. Okay, friends, enough of the self-introduction. This is the ultimate money formula. It is called call for in exchange. Now looking at that formula, please don't get scared. Don't get intimidated and don't think that it has anything to do with currency trading or foreign exchange. It is just the formula that I have created. Let's break down the formula bit by bit. We will, of course, go deeper into all the details. But first, let's take call. C-O-L over Q-O-L. This is cost of living as compared to quality of life. The next we have are the four ins. The first of the four in and the most important is inflation. The second in is investment. The third in is income. The fourth in is interest. And then we move into EX. The E stands for emotions, mainly greed and fear. The X is expectations. And putting all of these together, we end up having change. The old formula only had change because I was looking only at changes in prices on a day-to-day -day basis, which is technical analysis. However, notice here, I added the delta in this new formula after the word change, which means changes in the prices creates changes in the formula, which in turn makes changes in the prices. Very dynamic, as you can see. This takes into consideration changes in equation as well. So the ultimate money formula for investment, finance, socioeconomic planning, and everything else is for in exchange. 
Before it gets more confusing than it should be, let's start with the first part of the formula called COL over QOL, cost of living over quality of life. I want to point out that there is macroeconomics and there is microeconomics or what we can call socioeconomics. I do use macroeconomics in trading since this is important in the field of trading in financial markets, especially stocks or shares, certain commodities and definitely foreign exchange. But this is only important for international investors and active traders, including day traders. Many economists, planners, politicians, and businessmen make a very big mistake of simply looking at what we call macroeconomics. They always focus on GDP, GDP growth rate, per capita GDP, unemployment rate, and inflation rate. I can't blame them for looking at these. These measures are very important too, but they focus far too much on macroeconomics. To a degree, they give false hopes, especially to the working class and to low-income people, by saying that our high GDP will eventually trickle down the social ladder and benefit the masses. My dear friends, this will never happen. Believe me, it will never happen. A top-down approach to economics will never benefit lower social classes and thus will never generate true and proper economic growth. I would like to emphasize the use of microeconomics, or better yet, socioeconomics, and even modern businessmen approach methods where social responsibility takes high precedence. Instead of the top to bottom approach used by politicians and business planners, we should use a bottom up approach in the social economics. Anyway, going back to the formula, cost of living over quality of life. It cannot be measured by many of these measures that economists are making use of today. We need a lot more statistics in order to measure these things. We need to know the median income per capita. We need to know the median income per individual. Median cost of housing, both for rental or for ownership. We need to know the cost of doing business, of course, which also ties up with cost of living. We need to know the median cost of the very basic food items, a very basic basket of groceries and produce that an individual needs for a certain period of time. We need to know the median cost of education, median cost of health, and so on. This, of course, will vary from city to city and country to country. But we need the proper statistics authority to keep these types of records accurate and up to date. This is what a good friend of mine, Nick Johnson, is doing right now in his YouTube channel. But obviously, he's only doing it for the U.S. of America. He's concentrating on different parts of America and describing life there making use of so many different statistics. This is what we need to do as well globally in any country or city or any jurisdiction. We need to do this so we can understand the socioeconomics involved at the grassroots level in order to make changes and improve life for all people. Anyway, this is a bit deep into economics but I would like to just give you a touch of what call or the first and most important part of the formula is all about. If you know there is a problem 
the first and most important step is to accept the problem and to diagnose the problem. And after you have clearly diagnosed the problem, only then can you find the proper solution to that problem. Many countries are suffering from poverty, but the GDP is high, the unemployment rate is low, and inflation rate is said to be under control. So why then is there high poverty in these countries? Obviously, there is a problem with the system. We must look into the cost of living and the quality of life in this formula. I would like to give you better examples, but unfortunately, I also have limited statistics myself for other countries like India and the Philippines and other Southeast Asian nations. However, please look into my friend's channel, Nick Johnson. The link is also in the description below and above. And listen and understand how he describes all the different statistics that he uses to measure both the cost of living and, very importantly, the quality of life. This all form part to the cost of living and quality of life portion of the equation. This is the basic foundation, not just for the ultimate money formula, but wherever socioeconomics is concerned. And we all should look at this carefully for our individual needs.